Welcome to The Cabral Concept, where board-certified doctor of naturopathy, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares with you exactly how you can reverse aging, take back your health, and live a life full of energy and passion with new 20-minute episodes every single day to keep you healthy and engaged. Now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everybody. We are here today with a brand new Cabral House Call. Today's episode 2844. Always feel free to read along with the questions if you'd like at stephencabral.com slash 2844. And of course, if you want to search for your own topic on 2,843 previous podcasts, head on over to stephencabral.com slash podcast. Use that search bar. Look for your own answers there as well. Now, if you ever have a question, want same day answers, head on over to cabralsupportgroup.com. Completely free, private Facebook group. Sign on up. It's it's completely free. 25,000 plus other people from around the world. Really amazing online global health community. Just people supporting people. Our coaches are in there answering your questions as well. All right. Let's get into the questions. We had some real uh, powerful questions yesterday, so hopefully you tuned into yesterday's show as well. But today we kick off with Darren. Let's see what Darren says. Uh, Again, I have to give you my disclaimer. No medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis. Uh, What I try to do is get to the bottom of people's health issues rather than some type of palliative short-term based fix, right? So that's not what I do. I like to help people in the short term, yes, but always figure out, what could be the root cause of this? How can we help this person, yes, feel better today, but heal, truly heal at a much deeper level over the next few months? All right, so Darren's up first. Darren says, good day, Dr. Brawl. What are your thoughts on recommendations for men to start taking low doses of Cialis daily? I'm seeing it recommended in the health and fitness sphere by different people in the know, including Dr. Andrew Huberman, Dr. Uh, Rena Malik, Jay Ferugia, et cetera. There are claims of it helping with overall physical fitness, performance, heart health, et cetera. Any drawbacks or is it something you definitely do not recommend? Okay, so keep in mind, I'm a board certified naturopath. That's that's what I am, board certified doctor of naturopathy. That's my degree, that's my cert- board certification. I have subspecialties in functional medicine, integrative health, Ayurvedic medicine, TCM, bioregulatory medicine, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I don't recommend pharmaceuticals in any way, shape or form unless it is a life-saving condition. So I, I don't know, I uh, apologize, I don't know Dr. Rena Malik, I, I probably should, but I don't. Um, Dr. Huberman's fantastic. Uh, Jay Ferugia, obviously, you know, I've talked about him many times, he's fantastic. I don't even know that these people have recommended that, so I hate even using their names uh, because I don't know how they've recommended it in the past, maybe they have. And I'm not saying it's even bad. I, in no way, shape or form, recommend Cialis. I just. Don't recommend any pharmaceuticals because for the most part, every pharmaceutical has a repercussion inside of the body and has to be processed by the liver as well. So if you're asking me, okay, how can we improve overall physical fitness and heart health? Well, what does the heart need? Does it, is, does it have a Cialis deficiency? In my opinion, I don't believe that it does, right? And if I want a vasodilator, which essentially is what uh, Viagra or Cialis or those these types of things are, then what am I using? Well, um, first of all, I'm going to decrease inflammation. I'm going to improve the overall inflammatory load in the body by taking off certain stressors. I'm going to improve sleep. And if I need to improve nitric oxide, I can use certain foods that improve NO, nitrous oxide, or NO2. I can also use something like L-citrulline, or if the person doesn't have any herpes-based virus, um, I can use L-arginine. And both of those are going to be tremendous vasodilators. So, I'm just not, I will just will never use pharmaceuticals. However, I keep my mind open. And in the future, are there products that may help to extend life? Yes. But even when you look at something like metformin, I'm not interested in using metformin. I'm really not. Because I'll use something like berberine instead. I'll use 500 milligrams two to three times a day. So that's how I look at things. I look at things from a much more natural perspective with the understanding that I don't believe the body is missing any pharmaceuticals. Now, I keep my mind open, as I said, because in the future, they are working on some anti-aging, longevity-based drugs that could push the span of healthy human health span and lifespan. So um, this is not one I recommend, but um, again, I, I throw no uh, shade onto anyone else, and I, you know, I'm certainly big fans of the other people you mentioned. Okay. 
Melissa's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I want to ask if you can provide the correct technique to use lymphatic drainage using a dry brush in your body and a gua sha tool on your face and neck. Many people on YouTube say different things regarding the techniques, and I'm not sure what to follow. I know in the rain barrel effect, it says to lead the strokes for dry brushing towards the heart, but a video I found from a certified lymphedema physical therapist said to direct the strokes towards your lymph nodes, such as the armpits, as opposed to just the heart. What are your thoughts? I want to make sure I'm doing it as effectively as possible. Any tips for gua sha for the face and neck would be greatly appreciated. Uh, also is dry brushing during pregnancy and breastfeeding safe. Okay. Happy to answer all of this. The answer is that everybody's correct. Uh, it's just different ways of saying the same thing, honestly, because you have to move towards your heart and the lymph nodes are towards the heart. So let me just give you an example. If you're doing your, uh, let's say neck, you're going down towards your collarbone. The lymph nodes are around your collarbone. Okay. So that's towards the heart on your arms. You're going from your wrist all the way to your armpits. So that's where your lymph nodes are. From your ankles, you're going up to the back of your knees. There's lymph nodes there. From the knees to your hips, you're going up to your groin, where the lymph nodes are. The stomach, you're typically going in a circle. It's a circular motion, but you could go up towards the heart if you want. And I, I have diagrams on all of this, and I have free podcasts with diagrams as well. If you go to stephencabral.com slash podcast, you can just um, search uh, lymphatic drainage or dry brushing. You should be able to find it. If you can't find the show, we'll find it for you. Just write in at cabralsupportgroup.com. So everything is towards the heart and everything is towards the lymph nodes because the armpits are towards the heart. The groin is up from the legs towards the heart and the collarbone down from your neck and face is towards the heart. So it's all correct. And the lymphedema physical therapist is correct, and so is saying towards the heart. I, again, you just kind of want to simplify it as, as much as possible for, for the you know, 8 billion people in the world. And, and then you can always refine it more, for sure. Now, the face is different. And I could probably do a whole video on this, but the face, you are actually draining towards your ears and the jaw. So in your eyes, you go in a bit of a circle. So under the eyes, you go to the outside, circle out towards the ears. And on the top of the eyes, you're actually moving down and through the nose out to the cheeks and the uh, lining of the ear as well. For the forehead, you're moving across with your fingertips or a gua sha tool to your temples and then down. And then for your jawline, you're actually raking the jaw, uh, which is good for the a collagen building too and stimulus towards the ear. Now, before you do any of this, you always start with your neck and you are essentially um, gua sha or using your fingers to go down slowly, not dragging and stretching your skin, but slowly just pressing about one millimeter to three millimeters maximum on the skin down towards your collarbone. So you open the lymph on your neck first, and then you can move the lymph on the face and you can move that lymph down through the neck to the lymph nodes. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, you always start from the outside extremities and you, you, there's actually multiple ways of doing this. I can't, I can't make it a whole lymphatic show. Um, but for sure, yeah, that's, that's the way that you do it. So hopefully that's helpful and just be gentle with the gua sha tools. Um, you know, always clean your face first and then don't go too deep. You, some people look like they're like raking their whole face. You only need to press. Um, cause actually if you press too hard, I could do all, I could do another five shows on lymphatic drainage. I could do two hours to three hours on it. Um, if you push too hard, you actually press off the lymph because the lymph is right below the skin. So you actually have to be fairly gentle uh, when you're doing lymphatic-based drainage, not too hard, because you actually press off the lymph. The lymph is a, a one-way street. Okay, next question. Great question though, Melissa. Elizabeth is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I've suffered from dry nose sores for years, literally years. There have been a couple of times when I have a staph infection so bad that it felt like somebody had punched me. The only time that the sores went away was when I had COVID plus a, weeks, a few weeks later. However, I'm happy to report that ever since I've been fasting for at least 12 hours a day and nearly immediately since I have started fasting, the nose sores are completely gone. After years of struggling day in and day out, they're now completely gone. Can you explain why fasting had such a positive effect? I can't tell you how grateful I am to not have to deal with the discomfort anymore. It's amazing. Elizabeth, happy to hear that. Anybody that doesn't know about intermittent fasting and the safe way and healthy ways to do it, um, please go to stephencabral.com slash IF. Those are all my shows just on intermittent fasting. Of course, they're all free. So check them out. Okay. So what happens is there's two things. One is we're typically eliminating certain foods when we start to fast 12 hours a day. So we eliminate after dinner snacking a lot of the time, and that has a huge effect, especially if it was chocolate or dairy or sugary based things, which create more mucus and inflammation in the body. 
I'm not saying dark chocolate. I'm just, you know, I'm saying some people, it's certainly a sensitivity. Okay. The other part is that you're now giving your body and your immune system ample time to clear up whatever bacteria, pathogens, viruses, old tissue, et cetera. That's a big part of what fasting does. So 12 hours a day, 6 a.m., sorry, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., 7 p.m. to 7 uh, a.m., all of those are fantastic 12-hour fast. Some people can even go from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m., which is typically my fasting window. Not saying it's the right window for you, but for some people, it, it can be really great. So um, that is one of the reasons. Your body is allowed to clean up the body that much faster. And I'm willing to bet you may have eliminated a food or two, uh, namely most likely a dairy-based food, uh, something that you may have been sensitive to. So uh, that is that. I'm going to keep it at that. And I've got lots of shows on intermittent fasting that may also hold another answer for you too. Let's do one or two more questions. I'd like to get to maybe two if we can. Dana's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I asked in the Facebook group for resources on... Uh, Pachulis, I think that's how you pronounce that word. I know what you're talking about, but I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation. But nevertheless, it's P-A-T-U-L-O-U-S, uh, eustachian tube dysfunction. And it looks like you've never done a podcast on it before. I've been dealing with this most of my life, and I'm curious if you have any information and insight on it. I know it can be triggered by exercise and weight loss, both of which I've experienced. I've learned to deal with it, but it's inconvenient, so I wanted to ask about this. Thanks. Okay, so... First of all, again, I don't look anything up while I'm doing the show. This is just based on previous experience, all the reading research that I've done. I'm pretty sure this is when the eardrum stays open for longer than it should. So you can get whooshing sounds in your ear. You can kind of like hear your own heartbeat sometimes. You can hear your own voice or echoing to a greater degree. Now, if I'm off, I apologize. I just, uh, again, I just Totally, dis totally disregard this. Um, but if that is the symptoms and that's what you're feeling right now, I've seen it happen in a few different ways. So I've actually seen it with people being dehydrated. And I think that's what they may talk about with exercise and weight loss is some of the dehydration aspect. Because I've actually never seen like a science uh, correlated one with exercise or weight loss. However, I have seen it with inflammation. That's important to note. Like it's really important because um, although it's great to exercise, we also want to make sure that we're not over exercising and uh, creating too much inflammation in the body, right? So that's really important as well. The other one that I said is um, is the dehydration, and this can happen too because when you go on a lower carb diet. Uh, people forget. I'm probably going to do a whole podcast on this. Think of the word. You probably never thought of it in this way before. Think of the word carbohydrate. Hydrate is in that. Your body holds on to more water when you're eating carbohydrates. This is not necessarily a bad thing, right? But when you are going a low carb diet, you actually drop quite a bit of water. And I think that that's you know, important to look at as well. The other one I've, I've seen in my practice is nasal congestion. There's a strange link. It's not strange, but it's, it's a link between the clarity of your nasal passages and sinus passages and the clarity of your ear drums. They work together. So think of it this way. Maybe not when you, maybe just when you were younger, or maybe if you had a cold and you had congestion in your nasal passages, or even maybe even your sinuses and, and the eustachian tube in the air, and you went on a plane and your ears hurt, you had like an earache and you needed them to pop. That's that congestion in there. So what I have some people do, because again, I'm not giving medical advice, we will do, we will use a product called Sinus Support, besides other great products like omega-3s and daily nutritional support and vitamin D3 and balanced zinc and vitamin C for the immune system. Okay. But we will also use a neti pot. And we will use a neti pot and we will put in two to three drops of citricidal drops is typically what we use, but you can use whatever you want and your saline, of course. And then we clean out the nasal passages and we do that for about a week and often they can get tremendous results. So I look at it as overall inflammation, what inflammation is going on in the body, many different sources of that. And then we have dehydration and then we have potentially congestion actually in these sinus passages. So that's absolutely what I would look at. And, uh, but again, not, not medical advice. And so hopefully that was helpful. All right, let's get to one more question. This is from Ashley. Ashley says, hi, Dr. Brawl. First, I want to say thank you for sharing so much of your valuable, of your knowledge. It has really helped me on my health journey and I've gained valuable knowledge from your podcast. My question is regarding estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. What are the true healthy level ranges in females and males? I feel like you spoke about this, 
but or before, but for the life of me, I can't find that podcast. I appreciate you and your help. Well, this is a longer answer. And what I would love to do is I'm not usually able to do this, but I'm going to get you this podcast. And the reason is I want to share it with everybody because I have case studies on every single lab. So if you go to stephencabral.com slash podcast, and you just go to the right-hand column, and at the very bottom on the right, like the orange bars, it says case studies. And it will share with you all of my podcasts just on case studies, on labs. And so there's one called um, Hormones Case Study on Low T and Cortisol. That's episode 2588. But I want to share with you a couple more, okay? There's another one on hormones, stress, the menstrual cycle, and getting pregnant. That's an important one for you because it will go through female hormones. That's 2420. And then there's one on testosterone that I think might be one more that would be valuable to you. And that's episode 2393. Okay, one more, just one more. This is 2309, and this one is on infertility, menopause, and stress. Those four will take you only about an hour to go through. And I think you'll know at that point pretty much all you need to about proper hormone levels. Now, you don't have to go through all of them, of course, but I think that um, when you can be at your computer or even on your phone, you can watch the video and you can actually see what these labs look like. And then maybe you decide to run your own labs with the stress, mood, and metabolism test. It's literally the number one lab out there to look at estrogen, progesterone, the ratio between those two, testosterone, DHEA, cortisol at four times throughout the day, uh, T4, T3, TSH, TPO antibodies for your thyroid, then vitamin D3, insulin, and hemoglobin A1C. It is an absolutely phenomenal test. Nothing else like it. It's only at Equal Life, and that is at stephencabral.com slash shop. You can head on over and look at the stress, mood, and metabolism test. Um, you can run it with our team, of course, there, but you can also run it with an integrative health practitioner, level two, and you can find IHPs or maybe even become an IHP yourself, a certified health coach at um, integrativehealthpractitioner.org. All right, that is everything for today. I appreciate you, as always, tuning into the Cabral Concept. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you could share this show with any topic, with someone that you believe it could serve. That's what this show is all about, passing on the information. Thanks so much. I'll be back tomorrow with our Mindset and Motivation Monday. Take care, everybody. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.